Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld Extreme Desert Challenge. In our last episode, we did a whole lot of construction work, we built ourselves some turret-powered defenses, overhauled our bedrooms, and finished things off with a small hospital, and that is where we continue today. We still have a rainy thunderstorm raging over the desert as well as a heat wave, and that thunderstorm is part of a quest that we have technically already completed, but the weather controller that is causing it is still active on the world map, so even though we can protect our colonists somewhat with the construction of a few roofs here, we will tackle that quest in just a moment. And we are doing so not with Admo and also not with Jake, instead we are using Colony Founder and Resident Psycaster Stake. The reason for that is quite simple, the site here is guarded by three guinea pigs, and even though they are not terribly dangerous, they are in fact faster than any of our colonists, and only Stake can slow them down using his burden ability. Now, one alternative solution here would have been to just armor up and go into melee combat. I think with a competent melee fighter like Edmo that would have worked as well. But let's share the glories of combat between our colonists. After all, we cannot have Edmo be the only one who gets to have fun. Now, with Stake on his way, you can also see we have installed two granite columns here. I don't think they're actually necessary to hold up the roof above the walkway but they look nice and we have the space to spare. Now, up next we are taking two of the Crypto Sleep Caskets here with us. We have opened them already and that is where Jake came from. And at this point they do not really serve any purpose. So let's put two of them in our hospital as sort of emergency solutions, should we encounter any unsolvable medical emergencies. Speaking of which, just in that moment, Edmo and Redhawk come down with the flu. Not something that I would classify as an emergency by any means, but definitely something that needs to be taken care of right away. And we are using our regular medicine for this, even though it's probably not necessary. I do not want to take any risks though. And especially with Stay currently gone as well, I think we need these two back on their feet as quickly as possible. Now, speaking of steak, as we watch Jake gather some more building materials here, after only a few hours of travel, he has reached his destination, and things are looking manageable, I would say. Inside of the building here, we will find the weather controller. Before we get to that, though, we probably have to take care of these three guys. Three guinea pigs, which should not be too much of a problem, if we can keep our distance. So we are starting things off here with the liberal use of Burden, and I will admit the heavy SMG is likely not the best weapon for this task. All things considered, a melee approach is probably best suited for these types of small mobile enemies, but I simply didn't want to risk anything. Even inside of a heavy suit of armor, a colonist can still easily lose a finger or a toe, and considering how this quest is more or less just a minor nuisance, I am not ready to pay that price just yet. And as you can see, in the end, things go more or less according to plan. One of the guinea pig corpses here is even preserved, so we might be able to take some meat back to the colony. First of all though, let's take care of that weather controller. And as you can imagine, that is going to take a moment. Eventually though, in the evening, the machine is destroyed, and with that, the thunderstorm should end soon as well. At this point, I was also pleasantly surprised to see an iguana investigate our guinea pig corpse, so let's not return back home just yet, and instead do some more hunting. And because animal corpses are, for some reason, pretty damn heavy in this game, I believe the guinea pig weighs about 14 kilograms. Let's put down a butcher spot real quick here, which we can use to chop both animals into bits and pieces, and that will then make it much easier to carry them back to the base. We will of course also take the plasteel, one component, and all the steel we can carry. Especially plasteel has become a pretty rare resource with some of the latest updates, so in the early to mid game we definitely want to grab all that we can. 
Back in our base, meanwhile, the weather is changing, and in more than one way. As night slowly sets across the desert, the heat wave is coming to an end, and I'm sure that in a few hours the thunderstorm will subside as well. Our treatment of the flu, meanwhile, is making good progress. Despite only using self-tending, Red Hawk is actually making faster progress towards immunity than Edmo, but neither one of them should be in too much danger here if we can keep the treatments going. On the next morning, then, we can watch as Jake continues to collect building materials, and a few hours later, in the early afternoon, Troy finishes the research of sterile materials. This means we can now construct the expensive but useful sterile tiles, which are very useful for rooms that need to be clean at all times, primarily hospitals, but also kitchens and research rooms. Just a few moments later, Steak then makes his triumphant return, and now that Troy has spent a bit of time on Edmo's bedside cheering up our patient, we can start our next research project, Devil Strand. Now, Devil's Strand is a bit of a controversial crop in this game, as this mushroom produces a very high quality and protective fiber, but it also takes a ridiculously long time to grow. It can also not be grown in hydroponics, which makes it even worse for our situation. Still, researching it is cheap and we have plenty of food for the moment, so I think we can spare some growing space to at least see how this goes. And so, the evening progresses and food does in fact become a bit scarce, but only for our dogs, who are currently feeding on some of the rice we have left over, but only until we obtain fresh meat again, so that we can make more kibble. A small amount can in fact be made right here now, thanks to what steak brought back, but as you can imagine, that will not keep our animal companions fat for too long. On the next morning, we then have another round of flu treatments to observe, and we have already switched to herbal medicine for this, because I would say the disease is very much under control. Up next then, a historic moment in the young history of the steakhouse. We are harvesting our very first drugs. This is also something that we completely skipped in the Ice Sheet series, but there is a lot of potential here to make a decent amount of money, and it does not really require us to do a whole lot of work. Before we start with the drug production though, let's do some cleaning up around the base. Let's take a few hours here to get everything in order, and let's not jump from one project to the next too quickly. In the evening then, most of the base is squeaky clean. Atmo briefly has to interrupt his recovery process to make some meals for the colony, and then it's time for one more treatment, and then we can skip ahead to the next morning. At this point, we are also reminded that in 24 hours, the Acolyte Under Threat quest expires, and after receiving a lot of comments about this on the last video, I think we are going to let this one expire. Yes, we are missing out on some potentially very interesting rewards, but taking care of two mech clusters at this point in the game is something that I don't really feel too confident about, not to mention the trouble we would have of giving a sick colonist constant treatment for 21 days straight, so all in all, I think we're better off focusing on our own projects. One of which begins right now, and it is putting down some sterile tiles inside of our hospital. Yes, this comes at a cost of over 400 units of silver, but it will help reduce the chance of infection quite significantly, and that is, after all, why we have built a dedicated hospital in the first place. Now, as you can see, even with two people working on it, the whole process here takes a while, and before it is done, we are interrupted by Troy, who has made his next breakthrough. We can now plan Devil Strand, again with all its advantages and problems, and I think we'll do that as soon as another hay harvest is ready and another field opens up. In the meantime though, let's keep Troy busy with another quick and easy project, Plate Armor. Now, we're not actually researching this because we want to manufacture Plate Armor, but much more so because we need to have it unlocked in order to research Flag Armor. Since our five colonists will very likely continue to wear dusters for the foreseeable future, flak vests will play an important role in keeping everyone safe, so we should do all we can to be able to make them ourselves. With all of that going on, it is then high time for the first event of today's episode, as we have cargo pods dropped down in the desert. Inside of them we can find a bunch of corn, and even though we are definitely not experiencing any sort of food shortage at the moment, we will gladly take that, 
alongside all of the steel slag chunks of course, which in my opinion might even be the real treasure in this drop. Speaking of drops, just a few seconds later a piece of ship junk falls down right next to our base, so we'll make sure to disassemble that as well for more steel and components. And speaking of components, that is what Redhawk is now digging for. We currently only have three but a plethora of electrical devices and we also need six for the drug lab alone, so we are lucky that we have at least a few hidden inside of the mountain here. Back in the base meanwhile, our hospital has been properly floored. And you can see it here, despite a few tiles of dirt, the overall rating is still clean and the new floor tiles should make sure that it stays that way. Now interestingly enough, room cleanliness not only affects infection chance, but also research speed. For that reason, I think it is a good idea to move Troy's research bench over here now. That way he can not only research a little bit faster, but also keep our patients company, so that they don't get bored too quickly. Before we make any of those moves however, we have yet another event waiting for us. This time it is another crashed transport part, but filled with someone who is unable to walk and who has unfortunately decided to join us without asking for permission first. Now after the short period of only 38 days, his medical condition will resolve itself and during that time we also do not need to administer any sort of treatment, so in that regard this is actually not too bad. However, his skills and traits are nothing that we're really looking for at the moment. Abrasive is actually a trait that we are actively trying to avoid, so feeding this guy for over half an in-game year with no real benefit at the end, I am admittedly not so sure if that is what we want to do at this point. However, I would like to think that our colonists are not all cruel bastards, so let's go for a compromise. We will accept this colonist and from the list of patrons in the naming rights tier and above, we'll give him the name Alistair and then we'll carry Alistair to one of our Cryptosleep caskets. Before any of that can happen though, we have a group of traders arrive and one of them is actually related to Troy. Luckily though, it looks like we don't have to murder them this time. Alistair meanwhile is carried to the Cryptosleep casket where he will not make any sort of progress or decline for that matter. Once we take him out he will be exactly as he is right now, but maybe once that time comes our colony will have a bit more of a need for him. Now for conducting the trade business we will as usual use Red Hawk, even though her negotiation effectiveness is slightly reduced as she is still recovering from the flu. But we're not talking about any major penalties and she is still by far the most skilled socializer in our colony, so let's see if she can strike a good deal for us. Right, so we have one item here that I am very interested in. This neural calculator gives a 20% bonus to research speed and especially for some of the late game projects that is a substantial bonus. However, the item is not cheap either with a price tag of just under 1500 silver. I think we can make this work though if we sell our elephant tusks and thrombo horns. We will also sell the word of trust Psy trainer that we received as part of a quest I believe. The Psy cast associated with it is very situational and overall nothing that we desperately need. Finally then, and I will admit this was a bit of a tough decision, we will also have to get rid of our psychic insanity lance. Again, a situational but very useful artifact. Unfortunately though, it is the only item that bridges the silver gap here, so we don't really have much of a choice here. And there we go, we are now the proud owners of a neurocalculator, a device that we are very likely going to install on Troy, of course only after Redhawk has made a full recovery, because this thing will have to be installed inside of Troy's brain, so I think we need Redhawk at the top of her abilities. A few more hours then pass by without any incidents. Edmo has already left the hospital for good and is now making some room, because we will now be putting our second research bench inside here as well. Yes, the hospital is becoming a bit crowded now, but I think even a small bonus to research speed is worth it. In the meantime, we have also received another quest, albeit one that we are likely going to decline. The almighty Imperium of Boso is asking us to lend them three of our colonists for 22 days and even if we would be sending the highly immobile Alistair that is still half of our colony and all of that for a comparatively meager reward. 
Now, in return, we could obtain a new colonist ourselves, and even if this was someone with an amazing skill set, I would probably still be hesitant about accepting this quest. But as you can see, Feng here is really just mediocre to solid, perhaps. She does not really fill a need and doesn't have any fantastic traits either. So, easy decision, we will let this one pass and instead focus now on drug production. We finally have enough components now to build a wooden drug lab, which is also why we moved the research table. And all the necessary utilities are quickly constructed. However, before we can start the production, we have a fight to defuse, as Jake and Edmo have started punching each other. Now, the easiest solution to that is probably to just arrest one of them. But despite Red Hawk being only a few rooms over, it never comes to that, as the two of them stop fighting almost immediately. Well, maybe Red Hawk has a bit of an authoritative presence, or Edmo simply doesn't want to disappoint her. In any case, she can now quickly patch up both Jake's and Edmo's wounds, and then the two of them should hopefully make a quick recovery. Now, at this point, let's talk about drugs, more specifically Flake and Yayo. Both of these substances require psychoid leaves to be made, and both of them are valid options depending on where your colony's bottleneck is. First of all, Flake requires 4 Psychoid Leaves, and the resulting dose of Flake has a market value of 14 Silver. Yayo, on the other hand, requires double the amount of Psychoid Leaves, however, its market value is not quite twice as much, at only 21 Silver. Both drugs weigh the exact same though, so one caravan colonist can theoretically carry much more value by going with Yayo, so if carrying capacity is the bottleneck, then I would definitely go with that. However, we are starting off our production on a much smaller scale, and our primary goal at this point is to just maximize our profits, so with that in mind, let's make some flake. Now at this point, one final thing that is important for drug production. While the colonist who takes care of this task needs to be assigned to crafting, the all-important skill for this task is actually intellectual. It is this intellectual skill that governs how quickly a colonist performs this manufacturing process, so I think to no one's surprise we are letting Troy handle this. He is currently sitting at a skill level of 18, and therefore the whole task should not take him too long. Our first 17 units of flake are then produced right after the caravan has left, although I'm not quite sure if they would have bought it anyway. After all, they didn't want to have any of our other drugs either. On the next morning, it is then time to make Troy even more of an intellectual performer. So let's queue up the operation here and have Red Hawk install the neurocalculator in his brain. And yes, I know Steak also still has an operation inspiration, but I still don't fully trust in his medical skills, so let's instead have a professional take care of this. And because Troy is hogging the only medical bed inside of our hospital, we are being punished right away here. On his way to full recovery, Jake's leg gets infected. Seems like Edmo kicked him really hard, and we'll take care of that in just a second. First of all, though, Red Hawk can report a success from the hospital. Yes, Troy will be a bit dizzy for the next few hours, but once his mind has fully cleared, he will now research 20% faster. Jake's infection, meanwhile, is of course up next on our to-do list, and just as Red Hawk starts bandaging up the wounds, a flash storm strikes the desert, and not too far away from our base either, so for the next few hours I think we should be a bit careful. Luckily though, the storm really doesn't last all that long, and so a few moments later our base is once again only engulfed by the sounds of the desert, and of course those of our smelter. Red Hawk, meanwhile, plants more heal root and improves her plant skill even further. Stake, meanwhile, loses his surgery inspiration, but I think that is okay. And then we are greeted by the next event, as a group of wild boars is passing by. And I don't think I have to mention that this, of course, means hunting time. We desperately need more meat to make kibble for our dogs, so let's equip everyone with a ranged weapon and meet the animals out in the sand. And let's not make this too long, even with Jake still recovering, our four other colonists are of course very successful. One boar after the other goes down, and just as we are about to hunt down the last one, another trader arrives. And once again, he is related to Troy. 
Now it will take him a moment until he reaches our base, so we can quickly take care of the last boar here as well. And Steak can then put one animal after the other out of its misery and carry the corpses back to the base. In the meantime, Troy's granduncle has arrived, so let's see if he has a few items of interest for sale. Well, it looks like we will be doing most of the selling here, and we can absolutely use the silver, that is no question. Unfortunately, our friend here doesn't actually have that much, so we are also buying one dose of medicine here to even things out a bit. All in all, though, I think you can see that drugs are in fact a very good way to make some money in this game. And with a successful trade conducted, Redhog now goes after the hay harvest. This is, by the way, also the field that I think we will plant Devil Strand on later. For now, though, we are once again being interrupted by an inspiration. Once again, it's Stake's turn, but this one seems a bit more useful. Any item, art or furniture he creates within the next eight days will be two quality levels higher than usual. And maybe that time window is actually long enough to allow us to research some of the more powerful guns in this game so that we don't have to waste this inspiration on something less useful. Speaking of research, at this point Troy also unlocks the secrets of plate armor, and we will continue as planned with flag armor, and with the latest upgrades I don't think that should take him too long. And I would say that is also about it for today. With another night setting across the desert, we have reached a good point to make the cut, I think. So let's end the episode right here and continue where we left off next time. And to wrap things up, I once again have some fan art for you. Yes, our lovely friend Tofu has once again been busy. Today I am very proud to present to you his interpretation of Jake, fully equipped in combat armor in what I think is once again an amazing picture. Tofu was also kind enough to create a lovely group picture of our five colonists, even though as of this episode we are technically six at the moment, depending of course on whether or not you count the crypto sleeping Alistair. So once again Tofu, thank you very much for that, I hope you guys enjoy his pictures as much as I do, and well, if you have enjoyed the episode too, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.